Hello fellow computer enthusiasts, my name is Christian, hope you're doing well today. In today's episode, I would like to show you how to work with dev containers in Visual Studio Code. I will explain what they are, what they are good for and why they make a whole lot of a difference either in a local or in a remote setup, either if you're working alone or in a team. So let's follow me to Visual Studio Code and I show you this awesome extension and explain how it works. If you are a developer, you know how important it is to have a consistent and reliable development environment. It doesn't matter if you are always working solo projects or on a team, it is crucial to have a consistent environment that ensures that your code runs smooth and without unexpected issues based on misconfigured settings and environments. Back then, before we had all these fancy CICD tools that support our automated builds from a server machine, there was an old saying, it runs on my machine which essentially means that your dev environment differs from those of your team and that code that you have written was unlikely to run on other computers without all the special flavors that you have added over the course of the project to your system. What a nightmare for a developer, isn't it? A lot has changed since then and most of the developers out there are working with repositories to ensure that everyone works in the same code base. And build servers do all the heavy lifting of building and testing our little code pieces integrated into a more bigger complex software. But there are situations where you want to build and execute your work directly on your developer machine. And in this case you want to ensure that everyone in the team has the same environment on every device, every computer. In best case, it's also the same environment as in your staging or production system. That's where development containers come into play. Because they offer a full featured development environment. Let's see how it works. Before we jump into the step-by-step -step tutorial, we first need to install Docker, Visual Studio Code and the remote container extensions to your system, whether it's Mac, Linux or Windows based. If everything is installed, we can start to write the necessary configuration files that will describe our Docker based dev containers. The first file that we need to create is called devcontainer.json and it contains any metadata and settings required to configure a development container for a given well-defined tool and runtime stack. For the sake of this video, we create a basic dev container JSON with a name, the specific environment as a docker compose file, the service that VS Code should connect to once running, the workspace folder and a definition for the Linux shell that we want to use within the container, in our case it's bash today. You will find a link to all the metadata that you can specify in the video description. Let's for now just work with the basic configuration. Next we will create a docker file which is essentially a recipe to create our docker image that we want to use as a development container. A docker file is a blueprint for a docker image and you can use the from command to select which image to use as a template. In our case it's python 3.10. That is a Debian based image but you can tailor to your need. We add a non root user and install required pip dependencies into our container in order to run our application and we are good to go. The last file that we create is our docker compose yaml file and that is used to create and manage all the other docker containers that might be needed alongside the dev container specified within our docker file. Imagine we are building a software which requires a Postgres database to run and a NAT server for PubSub messaging. In order to provide these server to our environment we will specify them within our docker compose file. It's also very useful if you are creating a web application and you want to deploy your application behind a reverse proxy like traffic to enable SSL certificates via Let's Encrypt during development process. You will find a working example of that kind of web application in my GitHub repository. As mentioned, the link can be found also in the video description. One important thing to mention is that all the files that we have created live in the .dev container folder within your project. 
In future, I plan to send a Raspberry Pi one third of the way to space and send telemetry data back to Earth via lower networking. The dev container for that project as well as the project source code will also be available in the ILTP WC GitHub repositories. Make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see a Raspberry Pi in our stratosphere. If you have a cool project idea that I can use to collect data in this project, let me know in the video description or by mail and I will try to realize it for you. But let's get back to our dev container store. After creating the three configuration files, let's try to open our workspace in a dev container. To do so, select File Open Folder and open the Project Root Folder. Usually, Visual Studio Code will detect the dev container configuration and ask you to reopen the folder in the remote container. But you can also click in the button left corner and select Open Remote Window and select Remote Container Reopen in Container by yourself at any time. After a while, the Docker image has been built and the environment from our Docker Compose file has been successfully created. Congratulations, you have now successfully opened a Visual Studio Code workspace in a dev container alongside with a Postgres database and a NATS messaging server that is ready to start coding with Python. You will also find a lot of pre-configured dev containers on the Microsoft website that is also shared in the video description. Thanks for watching this episode of ILTP WC. I hope you learned something today and enjoyed the content. If you want to see more awesome things that we can do with computers, please like, share and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video where I try to create a Doom-like game within just 24 hours.